everyone, last year I moved from Canada to Tokyo and I wanted to share with you my room. Dorky and I live in a small apartment in a 1LDK with a balcony. It's a fairly new building and everything feels like it was well kept before us. I work as a full time freelance children's book illustrator, so I needed a dedicated space to work at home comfortably. To the left of the room are two large closets, and a selling point of the room is the corner windows with ample light. An interesting thing to note is that not all rental units come with lighting installed, but thankfully we have one included, and the aircon doubles as a heater in the winter. There is a cozy carpet on the floor to give more activity space. We also lay the futon out to sleep on it. Right now, in the summer, the underside is a foam puzzle mat, but in the winter, we install a heated carpet under it. My desk is reserved for mostly computer work, and I have two more lamps for additional lighting. Now for the cute stuff. I have a polar bear igloo, which is actually a little plush playhouse for small dolls, and I put my AirPods in there. The bear theme continues with a thin fabric towel and placemat from a 100 yen shop. I've decorated my switch with some stickers and a Tokyo Skytree mascot. I recently upgraded to a new Mac Mini and it's been a game changer compared to my old laptop. It's been able to handle large scale graphic files with ease. I paired it with the Mac Studio display and chose the VESA mount option to lift it off the desk to give me more space. I went with the standard Apple keyboard though, I was curious about mechanical keyboards. I've been used to MacBooks so I stuck with the familiar trackpad. I was excited to find this Muji desk light at the recycle shop, I really like the minimalist design. Along the window ledge are a collection of toys. There are dedicated shops selling secondhand toys, and we take a look to pick up some small treasures. This chair was also thrifted, and I pair it with a stool as I'm too short and my feet don't fully reach the ground when sitting. Sometimes I'm drawing for the entire day, and I found that my neck and back would start to hurt. I bought this seat support to lift up my tailbone. I put on chair socks as well as a rubber grip to stabilize the table during earthquakes. These are two items I painted myself. This creature is said to ward off sickness. I see it as a kind of mermaid bird. It's made of ceramic. The next one is a plaster or paper mache sculpture that I painted. I keep the latest book I'm reading here. This is a children's illustration magazine. I have a Hobonichi Techo journal which I use as a diary. This one is an older cover that I got used. It's the 2015 Mother Edition and the seller included a little charm too. I have a LED trace pad when I transfer my digital sketches printed out to then trace on paper. This one has a knob adjustment for brightness. This is actually a monitor stand from IKEA. I keep some stationery inside. This Kirimi-chan case holds my SD cards and USBs. This toolbox is one of my favorites. It's from Muji in their signature off-white. Inside, I have a Procreate Shortcuts keyboard and some of my watercolor palettes.
Next to the desk is an IKEA cabinet. I keep all my books here. Nearly all the books are thrifted too. This color palette book has really helped me craft a cohesive look for the picture books I've been working on. It lists the values in RGB and CMYK codes and is sectioned by different moods. Super helpful. Next is my collection of books by my favorite illustrator, Yoshitake Shinsuke. He is a prominent children's book illustrator in Japan and around the world. On the lower shelf, I keep my colored pencils I use for outlining. I'm still using the Mitsubishi brand in Burnt Umber. The amount of art instruction books available in Japan is unparalleled. I really like this series that teaches anatomy through manga. I have bookmarked the pages for easy reference. The visuals are simple to understand. Even though it's anime style, I think it's easy to transfer the knowledge to other types of illustrations. This book teaches composition and how to create visual narratives. I like that it compares the same scene, one weaker and one stronger composition. The contrasting examples really help to clarify the concepts. There are niche books such as how to draw clothing folds. I picked up a magazine for interior references as well. I hung up some art in the corner. Since this is a rental unit, it's important not to make noticeable holes in the walls. These types of hooks use three small pins to secure onto the wall. Now to the right side of the room is a low wooden coffee table. I mostly work on my iPad here. A fluffy cushion provides some comfort. I've introduced this before in previous videos, but I mounted my iPad in this easel. I highly recommend this to digital artists as it gives much more hand and arm support to make more natural strokes as well as elevating it to minimize neck pain. The table has a small drawer where I keep some cosmetics. I placed a basket under where I keep my skincare goods and some cleaning supplies. Next to the coffee table is my stash of Copic markers. This has been my primary medium lately, especially for my picture book jobs. The handle has a cute miniature charm. I couldn't carry that many markers from Canada, so I actually bought a lot of them online here. Compared to North America, the pricing of Copics is much cheaper in Japan, but then I discovered the wonderful world of secondhand art supplies. In this corner is a simple coat stand and peeking from the edge is our foam mattress. Also a poster from one of my favorite illustrators. Of course, the second window has another toy display. I've been collecting the Sylvanian family critters from the used toy shops. The hedgehog one was a dream find for me. And then here are some other cute things sprinkled throughout the room. This is a risograph print from Matt Forsyth, a children's book illustrator who also worked on Adventure Time. I went to his talk in Tokyo and got this print signed. Closing the curtains now as we transition from art studio to cozy bedroom. The Mac doubles as a TV. We don't have a couch so the big plushies act as back support. And here's the futon all laid out. Good night, thanks for watching!